Hi, so welcome back to Real Auto Reports. Right here at Real Auto Ranch, I'm Jonathan McGrew, and today we have the Real First Impressions video edition on this 2014 Land Rover LR4, and this is the HSE model with Deluxe Package. So we'll tell you what all that means here in our First Impressions video with our typical walk around. So let's get started. All right, so from the front, these vehicles have a nice look, but they really haven't changed in the last couple of years. We saw a, a facelift a couple years ago from Land Rover, and before that, you can tell the older generation LR4s by the blockier headlight design where they weren't you know, encased by this nice LED light structure and the HID headlights here in the front. So one of the things that I like about these new Land Rovers is that going around the headlight here and then around the turn signal are those daytime running lights. And you can see those in our opening when the vehicle's coming towards you and they stand out nice and they give the vehicle a nice refreshed look in the front here. But otherwise, most of this is gonna look pretty similar to previous generations. Uh, you have your, of course, your large Land Rover badge. You have your typical grill here, a large kind of mesh grill. And then you have your park assist sensors and your fog lights and your windshield washers. Well, actually headlight washers, I should say, here in the front. And what I like about this vehicle is that it has kind of stayed the same because people really do like these LR4s. In other markets, they're still called Discovery. And uh, with the new Discovery Sport coming, out into the landscape here in the US with the concept that was unveiled at the New York Auto Show. It's neat to watch the brand evolve. So I do think we'll see changes in this vehicle in the next couple years. But this vehicle right here is a great example of the Land Rover design and brand look and feel. So let's go take a look at the side and see what's changed out over there. All right, so from the side here, again, you can see that this vehicle, if you've seen other LR4s, will look very similar. Of course, you have your SCV6 badging now, and we'll get to the engine and powertrain components here in a bit. But other than that, it's a nice slab side design. It's got some nice detail here in the typical Discovery fashion where you had the different heights in the roof as you come back from the front of the vehicle. You have your touch door handle so you can lock and unlock vehicles, power fold in mirrors, which fold in and fold out on lock, or you can do it manually on the inside. Of course, your skirting here, which is in a dark plastic, and some of that's for longevity off-road. Because we have the HSE with the Lux package, we add these 19-inch alloy wheels, which is a nice addition to this vehicle, makes it look a little bit more luxurious and urban friendly for all of your business meetings or Oh, I don't know, nice dinners. And the other thing I like is notice how short this vehicle is at the moment. It's in the accessible height so that you can easily step in and out of the vehicle with your passengers. So I like that feature. It's one that you get used to using so that you don't have to climb in and out of your SUV. Yet you can still put it up to an off-road height and really get going on those off-road trails especially the ones we have here in Colorado. So let's go take a look around back and see what's changed there. We'll go inside, then we'll look under the hood, and then we'll take it out on the road. So let's go see what the back looks like. All right, so back here in the back of the vehicle, you notice that this is a nice squared off design. It's kept that Land Rover Discovery heritage here in the LR4. And what I like about it is that as they've continued to evolve the design over the years, they've done some neat things with keeping the taillight wrapping, keeping the flow of the design around the back of the car. You see, a couple years ago, we saw them go to these clear lens taillights, which are a nice addition to this vehicle. LED, they give it a nice look, and it stands out as uh, a nice upgrade from the previous solid light generations where it was solid red plastic and yellow and, and than the clear for the reverse lights. Now, you are gonna find some interesting things here that are what I would consider back level or older generation design. And one of those is the split lift gate here. Like we have seen on some of the other vehicles like our, L, our Lexus LX570, and I commented on this that one too. This is a dual door design, which can be kind of cool because you can sit on it, but 
honestly, in most people's daily lives, we are looking and used to now in a 60 plus thousand dollar SUV of being able to take our smart key or wave our foot somewhere and open the rear lift gate. There's no way to do that, no way to open it, and surely no way to close it automatically, as you can see. I have to do that manually. The other thing is that with the rear seats back here, because we do have a seven passenger seat option, I've got to reach all the way in here, ugh, pull that latch, and then, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Kind of fumble with the seats there to get it to latch. Now notice, it's got a nice bar there, but then you go, well, how do I put this down? Well, how you put this down is you reach around the side, you pull the same latch, whew, and you put it down. So there's some first impressions things about this that I find a little difficult at the price point, but we're not gonna call it quits on this vehicle yet. Let's go look at how the inside looks, feels, and what it's like, and then let's go check out the new technology under the hood. All right, so from the driver's seat, this vehicle has all the luxury appointments you would expect from a Land Rover. You've got your three position memory seat, and notice the ledge still on the door like you had in the Range Rover Sport in 2013, but has now kind of become a lot more slanted in 2014 in the Range Rover Sport. But no, no, this one is nice and solid, and it just is a comfy vehicle. Again, um, I like the seats in this vehicle more than I like them in the Range Rover Sport we just tested in the 2014 model. So I think it's a comfortable vehicle. It's got adjustable power bolsters. You've got the adjustable column and the automatic tilt and away feature. I like the fact that it feels like there is quality in this vehicle and it's great to see that from Land Rover continuing that heritage. Land Rover being the original premium off-road vehicle. Now this is in other markets also considered a discovery, but the LR4 continues that heritage of being an upright sitting position and it drives heavier like the previous generation Range Rover Sport because it is still on the all steel ladder frame. But we have some new technology we want to talk about under the hood. Just to finish out the interior though, you have a nice center console here with all of your height adjustment on your suspension, your traction and terrain management system here, easily reachable, and of course other things like the Eco Stop Start button, which we'll talk about more under the hood, and then of course the cool and fancy raising dial transmission selector that I really do like. You see that in the Jaguar XF as well, and it's just a neat thing, and it's kind of fun to play with. And this vehicle does have the eight-speed automatic transmission with the paddle shifters, which just makes it that much more fun. So that's the first impressions. Let's go check out what's under the hood, and then we'll take this puppy for a spin. All right, so under the hood, well, like I always say, you have this nice big piece of black plastic, but it does say Land Rover on it. And it is the three liter V6 supercharged, a motor that is becoming pretty familiar in the Land Rover and Jaguar brands. And we saw it in the XJL all wheel drive that we tested. And then again, in the Range Rover Sport in 2014 that we just looked at in that really nice dark blue. Well, in this vehicle, we have the same engine making an appearance and being switched out for what used to be the standard five liter, 375 horsepower V8. So now you have the 340 horsepower V6 supercharged. It's a great motor, it's peppy, it has great power, and you don't feel like it has a ton of lag. Although, the lag will bite you occasionally when you're trying to jump out into traffic if you're in the wrong kind of speed. It will give you a little sense of, oh crap, I may have pulled out too soon. But in most cases with the eight speed automatic transmission that they've made this engine to, I find as a first impression, it's pretty peppy. But we'll tell you more about that in the real video, the real review, and how we've experienced it over several hundred miles once we get done driving it. But 
Getting back to this vehicle from a first impressions perspective, one of the ahas about it is that it will give you better gas mileage. You will see 14 miles per gallon in the city and 19 miles per gallon out on the freeway. And that is much better than the previous generation, which got 12 and 17. And I say much better because two miles per gallon is pretty significant. But if you're asking yourself, well, wait, I watched your Range Rover Sport video and it seemed like the MPGs were much more drastic, you know, they were much better. Well, this is still riding on that all steel ladder frame that we've been talking about. It's not as light. So remember the Range Rover Sport in its 2014 redesign shed 800 pounds. Uh, this guy doesn't have that, you know, doesn't have that luxury, if you will. So there are some things about it that are still, you know, probably uh, our customers f uh, looking for Land Rovers are probably still looking for a complete redesign. But have no fear, I'm sure that with the longevity that's been in this design and body, you're going to see some significant changes coming down the pipeline. And we saw some of those, as I mentioned, at the New York Auto Show. But if you're looking for today, which most people are, this is a fun vehicle to drive. And speaking of driving, let's go uh, take it out on the road. All right, so from a first impressions driving perspective in this 2014 LR4, what you're going to notice is that with this peppy V6 supercharged, you have good speed and, and acceleration and driving characteristics. And especially with this eight speed automatic transmission, it's going to keep you in the power band. Now, what's interesting about that is when you get on it, it does shift quickly. It does get you going. And the other thing that's interesting though, is that you're seeing a better mile per gallon or fuel economy out of this v6 supercharged with the eight speed than you were out of the older generation five liter v8 with 375 horsepower made it to the older generation six speed automatic that we saw here in the states but i think the interesting thing also is that you are getting about a second less zero to 60 according to the tests that we have seen 7.7 .7 seconds zero to 60 in this 2014 and the previous generation was getting around 6.6. .6. And uh, so it is a little bit slower, but you might not notice that given how spunky this vehicle seems to be to drive. And that's just our first impressions. Now, the other thing that you'll notice right away is that when you do give this vehicle a full stop, so you're coming, you're at a stoplight or you're pulling into your mailbox to grab something and you're stopped for long enough, it does have the Eco Stop Start technology, just like we're seeing in all the other three liter V6 supercharged that Land Rover and Jaguar are using. So there it goes, the Eco light comes on, it turns off, you lift off the brake and it starts right back up. We'll have more about the driving experience in this in our real video, The Real Review. But for now, what you need to know is that it drives well, it does have the heavier steering sense than the new Range Rover Sport we just tested, more like the previous generation. And actually in this vehicle, I think I prefer the way that this one steers than uh, the new Range Rover Sport. I like the heavier steering, it gives you a sense of confidence. And uh, this vehicle is heavier with the all steel ladder frame that I keep mentioning. So it, uh, it, it does have a sense of confidence behind the wheel. And with the improved fuel economy, this new V6 really does get you going and it's a nice addition you know nice new piece of this Land Rover LR4 but the one thing I will say is that it just doesn't have that V8 sound so we'll have the real video coming up shortly here on Real Auto Reports but we'll also have the wrap-up coming up next so stay tuned so that's the real first impressions video edition on the 2014 Land Rover LR4 HSE with the Lux package. This has the all new three liter V6 supercharged engine, just like the engine we saw in the 2014 Range Rover Sport by Land Rover. So this is kind of an interesting comparison to that car in that it is, or well, I should say SUV in that this SUV has gotten the upgrade engine as well, 
but we're not seeing quite the miles per gallon gains in this vehicle that we did in the Range Rover Sport. And that's because this is still using the steel ladder frame and not the all aluminum composition more like the, the Range Rover Sport and the large Range Rover luxury SUV. So still some uh, interesting things to come for this vehicle, I think. And what I think you're really gonna see, we just saw at the New York Auto Show, the announcement of the Discovery Sport concept. And I think you're gonna see this vehicle morph into a new vehicle here shortly in the Land Rover brand. They're doing exciting things. But if you wanna buy one today, the bottom line is that this is just a about a $63,000 vehicle is tested. It starts out right about $50,000 and uh, that puts it squarely in the price point it's been for the last couple years. And uh, well, it means that the Range Rover Sport is actually now a tier above it in a much higher price bracket than the one we tested being around 79,000. So these vehicles have now been significantly differentiated from the Range Rover Sport. And with seven passenger seating capability like the one we have here, it's a pretty capable off-road vehicle and still really classy in town. So we suggest you go out and try one if you're interested in a Land Rover and in the market for this class of luxury SUV. We'll have the real video, the real review coming up shortly. I'm Jonathan McGrew right here from Real Auto Ranch, Real Auto Reports, and we'll see you down the road.